Moving forward, we are going to sunny South Florida in the Boca Raton Bowl. We have USF against Syracuse. Uh, the numbers here are a little muddy considering we are recording during uh, just after a pretty large news break that I'll talk about here in a minute. But at the, this minute, Syracuse is a one and a half point favorite and this game carries an over under 59 points. Kicks off Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. From FAU Stadium, as the name suggests, it's home of FAU. It's one of 13 uh, FBS stadiums hosting bowls this postseason. We're going to be dealing with a little bit of wind in this game, looking like sustained winds, 15 miles an hour, 16 miles an hour with higher gusts. But, Kelly, it, it, I told you before we hit record, it's a, it's a good thing we're recording at the time that we are because just 10 minutes before hitting this button here, Garrett Schrader news came across that he will not play after undergoing shoulder surgery. It was, before then, pretty static. Syracuse minus three uh, with an over-under of 61. Of course, those have both come down. Now, I think Syracuse goes with Dan Villari, who is a converted tight end, is still playing tight end, wears number 89, I think, for this team. Uh, If he does get that QB1 nod like he did late in the season... This is a much different offense. And I don't mean in success. I mean visually. They're more ground and pound than they already are with short, very high completion throws for Villari, uh, who actually signed with Michigan as a quarterback pro style out of high school. Syracuse also turns over their entire uh, coaching staff. Uh, They're making some really sound moves for next year, I think. I liked a lot of their hires, a lot of who they're bringing in here. But uh, this might be a candidate for a team that is just fully checked out. If you don't have... Uh, your starting quarterback in there. You don't have the coaching staff in there. The kids that will play are probably going to play pretty inspired, especially Valari. I'll talk about him here more in a second, but I think you're going to get high effort out of those teams. But as a cohesive unit, I don't trust it very much, especially when you're going from upstate New York to North Miami, you know, Boca Raton. Like you're there for vacation. I'm interested to see if these kids do show up to play the bowl game as hard as they should. Uh, the over was hit really hard after opening at 57 and a half. Of course, that's come back down. But I've said in past videos that I believe a bad defense is a better fix for a bad offense than vice versa. And if you're looking at it, USF is 109th in points per drive allowed. Listen to this, Kelly. 55 points per game in losses this season that's what they are allowing there's a reason those are losses right yeah yeah it's terrible well in in wins it's 23 and a half so when they're winning games they are playing better defense but i can't trust this defensive unit as far as i can throw them and syracuse though they failed to score 30 points between weeks four and 12 they didn't do it once so like i said bad defenses are better fixes for bad offenses than the other way around um I'll be up front here. I, I originally bet USF to win this game. I took him with the points. I took him with the money line and over 61 points. But now with this Garrett Schrader news, I think the value falls out of USF. Honestly, if I see this pushing Syracuse plus three or better, I'm probably going to play back on the orange. And, and at that point, that'd be the only play that I would have in this game. Uh, USF is indeed, though, playing their first bowl game since 2018. They have the travel edge, and I think this team is playing really hard under Alex Gillespie. Great first year. Uh, you know, they have the offensive firepower to play inspired. Um, I still don't hate the over, uh, kind of whatever this number settles on, so I'd be patient. Uh, once it settles, I, I still don't mind playing back the over. This bowl game, Brett, is a perfect encapsulation of why it is so difficult to power rate teams during bowl season. All the things you just talked about, you've touched on almost all the factors that are at play during bowl season, not at play during the regular season. It's very, very tough for handicappers. I know you said you got in there early. You might get in there on the other side, depending on where it lands. This is just, it's such a different game in bowl season. That's why you're so good at it, Brett. I mentioned the five-game losing streak for Marshall uh, in the last preview. Well, Syracuse had their own five-game losing streak after starting 4-0 and this season. This is two years in a row, Brett, that the Orange got off to just a blistering start and couldn't maintain that momentum in the second half of the season. At 6-6, six and six, Syracuse fell about a win short of preseason expectations, and their power rating fell three and a half points over the course of the year. It actually climbed from preseason to where they were after the 4-0 and start, and it's plummeted like 10 points since then. So, yeah, the, sec- the back half of the year, or really the last two-thirds of the year, just not good for Syracuse. You mentioned their their scoring funk there from weeks 4 to 12. Yeah, exactly. USF 
They had an interesting year. Their power rating is essentially unchanged. They began the year number 108. They're currently ranked number 109. But the Bulls won nearly a game and a half more than projected in the preseason. Now, Brett, that can happen when you go 5-2 and two in games in which you have a pregame win expectancy between 30 and 70%. I mean, that's a rough estimate for the toss-ups. They went 5-2 and two in those toss-up games. It's a nice way to get to bowl eligibility for the first time since 2018, as you said. Yeah, I did promise that I would talk about uh, Valari a little bit. Uh, he, he burst onto the scene against Pitt. They used him primarily as a running back. 154 yards and a touchdown. He won, I believe, the National Ground Player of the Week in that game. Then they followed up the next game against Georgia Tech, where he rushed for 81 yards. But more interestingly, he went 14 for 14 passing for just 59 yards. But hey, 14 completions, that's not easy to do. Then he goes into the next game against Wake Forest, in which Garrett Schrader was still the quarterback, but he got some work in there, went 2 for 2, 51 yards, threw a touchdown pass, and uh, had 51 yards rushing. So this kid is he's talented, and, and the offense that they put around him works. Uh, and against USF's defense, especially one that is, uh, I, I think, I, I'm at least going to say outsized by Syracuse's offense, uh, I think they'll be able to get a push here. I also really like this Byron Brown kid on the other side, USF's quarterback. He rushed for almost 1,000 yards while passing for 3,100. He's got 34 combined touchdowns this year, and he really improved as a passer as the season went on. Galesha's system just meshed with this kid. He played really well. I'm very excited to see what he does in Tampa throughout his career. Uh, you know, I'm actually looking to his rushing yards uh, when those eventually are posted. Uh, the Garrett Schrader news, again, is throwing a, a wrench in that. We may not see this until Wednesday night, uh, but I, I think I'm looking over – uh, on, on his uh, rushing yards there. Syracuse gives up big-time work to opposing rushing quarterbacks. 